everyone. Get ready for a new episode of Inspired, the refreshing podcast made to have conversations centered around being designed by God to discover and dwell. Whether you're a mom, young professional, a caretaker, or whatever season in life you're in, you're sure to pick up helpful insight, thoughts to think on throughout the week, and leave this episode feeling inspired to know God in deeper ways. I'm Jessica, and I'm on the Inspired team here at X Church. And today, we want to dive into the origin of our name, Inspired. Welcome, welcome. You are tuning in to our very first Inspired podcast. I'm Jessica, and I've got Janice with me. Hey, I'm so glad you guys are listening. It's going to be a great adventure. And you know what? This is the first. Like it Jessica's, is. And I mean, anything is first is really cool when you think yes. about it. You the know, beginning. Yeah. I mean, it's like your first date with your husband <gasps> or or maybe, you know, like the first step that one of your kids took oh, or, yeah. you know, or the first day on a job. Yeah. You know, first day of school, you know, yeah. and, and God has a thing to say about first days. You oh, know, he yeah. talks about the first fruit. It's like the first of anything is special. Yes. And so I know that our time together here is going to be really oh, no. special. I'm so excited. You know, we're just, this is really just a very casual conversation that we want to invite you in. Mm -hmm. And there is always a seat at our table. It might be small, but you can <laughs> come up to our table, yeah. have a conversation with us, kind of listen and tune in. And um, we are sure that you're going to be able to take away nuggets of wisdom. Um, the mm -hmm. thing I'm excited about with this is that we're going to be displaying some stories of some, some of, amazing stories. Oh, absolutely. It's stories that will inspire you. I mean, there is, mm -hmm. that's the reason that this is called inspired podcast, because I know in my life and, and I know in your life too, what you share with me is that we have had several people in our life that have inspired us mm -hmm. to be better women, to take big steps of faith. Yeah. And so I know that if you're tuning in and you're listening, you are sure to be on this ride with us. So we're just excited to start out. I thought I'd give everybody a little bit of background. If you're listening from near or far, we're actually in Columbus, Ohio, and we're attached to a church called X Church. That's right. And we are really just in the center of Columbus. Mm -hmm. And um, this church has, has been around for, what were you saying, 12? Since 2003. 2003. Mm -hmm. Janice has been here for a long time. I haven't been here since then. I started in 2010. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and me and my husband came on board, mm -hmm. and um, my husband works at the church. And I am, we have three sons. Yeah, you do. We've got a house full of boys. Um, so he has uh, been here for about four years. Mm -hmm. And um, so what? how about you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you're connected to this church. Oh. Um, started coming here in 2010 and um, actually started working on staff five years ago. And I work with our small groups ministry. And I'm just so blessed to be that. I also play keyboard in, in the worship band and absolutely love that because I just, I, my background actually is music. And mm -hmm. so it's really cool to be able to do that every week and use that um, talent that it, God gave me to, in that way. Um, I have three kids, but my two oldest are boys and I have a daughter. My kids are all grown and adults. I also have three grandchildren, two grandsons and a granddaughter. So, um, you are blessed. Yes, I am blessed. <laughs> That's what they say. You know, there's a scripture, you know, about the gray hair and all that, but ladies, mine's covered up. <laughs> I, I don't do gray. So, <laughs> gray is just not your thing. No, gray's not my thing. So, I think I'm starting to get some grays. I think 2020 did me in. I think it did for a lot of us. <laughs> oh my, it was, it was a year. I think, I think the pandemic changed so many things for all of us. It I did. mean, we all do, you know, people talk about, oh, you know, there's a new normal and all this. What's it going to be like? But I, I think that um, I think one of the biggest ways the pandemic changed us is how we connect with one another. Yes. Um, I mean, all of us have probably been through far many, too many Zoom meetings than we <laughs> ever want to think about and ever yes. want to do again in tired our lives. Of Zoom. Yes, we're tired of Zoom. Um, but, you know, the virtual meeting, just even think about like going to see your doctor or something, mm -hmm. you know, the virtual medicines, the telehealth, all of those things that never, even several years ago, we would have thought would be kind of normal. Yeah. You know, people are, are working remotely. Mm -hmm. People are not going back to the office or maybe only part of the time. Yep. And so, so many of the ways that we've connected in the past and really taken for granted were totally taken away for a time. 
and maybe never will be the same. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm finding, even for myself, that when I get together with people, it's if it kind of feels just so much more precious. Yes. Because I know what it was like not mm-hmm. to have it. But also, I find that in talking to, you know, other people and other women, it's that the, the, the desire is for really intentional connection. Mm-hmm. We've had a lot of superficial connections in our lives. Yeah. And you know? I mean, even in our day and age with social media, I mean, yes. a, a lot of it is very shallow and, mm-hmm. you know, surface level. And like you're saying, I think that the past year and a half have really changed our desire for a deeper community. And that's really kind of what, what, what this podcast was birthed out of yeah. is, um, is just a, something that altered everybody in the world mm-hmm. to to come to a place where they realize maybe that they didn't have or they, they weren't able, I mean, physically able to have right. a connection with one another. And now we find ourselves kind of almost craving since we're able to be back in, you know, public and have people around us and everything craving some of those um, those deeper connections, the meaningful relationships being so important. And so that's really what what has kind of come about out of this podcast and not only this podcast, but a new ministry that we're starting in our church. Yes. And what are we calling it? Inspired. Yes. And this is the inspired podcast. And so, I mean, you'll find that it has, you know, this, this ministry has many different facets Mm -hmm. and this is just one of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that this is just to model very simply put, it's just a model, a conversation about relationships. And, you know, we're going to find, we're going to have, it's going to be really exciting. We're going to have several women come sit around this table um, to where we can hear their stories and uh, where they can, they can personally tell us just the road that they've been on and the journey they've been on and where they're going and how God is weaving through every single part of that story. And I know, like we said earlier, I am, I am so inspired by so many different mm-hmm. stories and, and specifically women's stories that have inspired me to be a better a wife, a better mom, a better daughter. Um, and so I know that we're going to be, as we journey through this podcast, we're going to have a lot of people on to kind of tell their story and to kind of just launch us into um, just being able to recognize what God, how God has designed all this and put all this together. But I think you're right. Like with the pandemic, it was just a different year and it, 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 it really caused us to question what kind of relationships that we have. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, there was several relationships that I had that fizzled out because I, like, I wasn't physically able to meet, but I also yeah. really recognized that some of those relationships um, were not really the best and the ones that inspired me to be a better person. And so I think just by inviting people on, we're going to find that we're all going to be inspired by others' stories. I'm really looking forward to that. Yes. I, because... Um, I'm, I'm really extroverted. I love talking to people. I'm the one who walks into the room where there's all these people I don't know. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's all these people I can get to know and, and hear their stories. And I can't wait to find out what makes them tick and what makes them special and all this kind of thing. And, um, and that's just kind of the way God wired me. Yes. And so I am really looking forward to hearing the stories that God is going to bring forth and, and just, um, and just seeing what, what we can learn from it because we can learn so much from each other. Oh my gosh. Um, Yes. You know, everybody has a story. Yes. Everybody has a story and there's nothing insignificant about any of our stories. I, um, I was thinking my, my three, my three kids are very close in age. When my youngest was born, I had a newborn, a two year old and a three year half, three and a half year old. Oh my gosh. And I would have pulled my hair out. Um, I did almost go insane the first year and a half. It was like, I had somebody say, if you can make it through the first 15 months, you'll be fine. And um, I do remember one day when I was like, I was writing in my journal because I've journaled for years. And I said, Lord, you made a mistake here. Um, This was a mistake to have me have kids this close together. All I want to do right now is walk out the front door, lock it behind me and just keep Mm. going because I can't do it. But I felt so insignificant. I felt like what I was doing, it was like, what difference am I making in the world? 
I am, yeah. you know, I'm changing. I don't think that you're the only one that's been there. I feel I, like it resonates with me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm changing diapers. I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning up messes. I'm breaking up fights between my kids. You know, I'm, I'm doing all those things. But what in the world am I doing that really has any meaning or significance? Mm-hmm. And I felt lost in who I was and who, who am I anymore? You know, all of those kinds of things. And just realizing at that time I had a woman in my life that her kids were older they were like elementary age she had been through some of that and and just saying you know this is your season and there is significance in it and God's going to use you in that and you know you can pray Hmm. you you know maybe you can't go out and evangelize or you can't go and do this you know thing at church but you can pray and so that's what I started to do yeah I just started to pray for people and just Mm -hmm. and it's like I'm up at night and I'm, you know, nursing the baby or doing whatever, I would just start praying people. And people start calling me saying, I know you are awake at night. Can you pray? Oh, you know, stuff what like that. Cool but, thing. you know, I mean, if you're in that spot, I just want to encourage you. Mm-hmm. You know, you are significant and your story is oh, so important. So good. And there's nothing that's going on in your life, you know, when you got those little ones around your knees that, you know, leave the snot marks, you know, halfway up your jeans. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, it's not insignificant. Mm-hmm. God is... God can use you, and and you may not see it right now, but he is. He doesn't waste anything. No, no, he doesn't. Yeah. Not one thing. Yeah. Well, we, um, I think in just in inviting people in, um, I just want to talk about where, where this, where this ministry has been and where it's going. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I mean, as long as this church has been around, there's been a community of women here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and um, there's a very there's a, something very special about having a meaningful relationship with with someone who is walking in the same shoes that you are. And there's also something really meaningful about creating relationships, like like you said, with that woman that inspired you, that had gone before a little bit before you, mm-hmm. and was able to speak into your life and speak significance over your life. I think that is so in- important and and oh, something yeah. that we that we all need. And I know that are the community of women here has always been here and it's it's kind of evolved over the years that the idea of relationships has, have evolved over the years and so maybe maybe a little you know time back we would gather and you know have you know something to talk about or we'd gather to do a craft night or mm-hmm. we would gather right. You, what you said, self-defense. Yeah, you, we, we one did time self, you guys we did. did so- <laughs> yeah, we did self-defense karate. classes one time. Not quite karate, but it was close. <laughs> um, and so there's been several different things that mm-hmm. have crossed our paths as women to mm-hmm. connect. But I feel like lately, like we said, like maybe maybe the events of a global pandemic have caused us to think a little bit more deeper, um, desire a little bit more, um, and then also crave authenticity, openness, vulnerability. And I, and I feel like that's what we're really trying to create here is Mm -hmm. that we might have things that we do and gatherings that we do. Um, and you might be listening to this podcast and you might have wondered how, how in the world do I just, I make it tomorrow when everything seems so pressing to me right now, I'm needed in 15 different directions and Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know you know, what lies in the future, maybe just coming in and listening to a conversation about how God has a purpose and a design for mm-hmm. our relationships as women, as we connect together to to drive us and to point us and to help us grow in the right direction mm-hmm. all together. And so can you just, I mean, I know you had mentioned one lady that has inspired mm-hmm. you but we were talking and you said that you've had several women over the oh, course of yeah. your life that have inspired you and have pointed you to oh, Jesus yeah. can you just speak yeah. into that I think you know the first woman I, I mentioned her was actually my first piano teacher Mrs. Geiger and um I, she taught me piano when I first started um for about four years and the one thing that she did she taught me about how to play but she inspired me to love music Mm, there's a big difference. And there is a big difference. And, you know, I may not be the the most talented piano player, but music inspires me, and mm-hmm. I love it. 
And so when I used to teach piano, that's what I try to do for my students. But I think probably the biggest blessing is I have five women in my life that we were calculating the other year. There's two of the five that I have known since 1989. I realize I'm dating myself right now. <laughs> but um, um, so we've known each other for over 30 years. And we have gone through some stuff. Mm. You know, we when we first started um, getting together, and it was just like, the, the coffee's on at my house. Come on over Saturday morning. Then somebody started bringing something to, you know, like coffee cake. And then we started talking. And we just started talking about our kids you know, we had different ages. Some of them, our kids were like preteens and teenage, early teenagers. Some of them were still elementary school, but they were kind of all in the same spot. Um, and at that time, we were at the same church. And and as we just spent more time talking, and we became more transparent with each other. Mm, there's where it is. You know, <laughs> transpa- vulnerability. Yes. transparency is so important, you know, mm-hmm. when it comes to being seen and being known. Yes. And we want that. But there is some risk in it and some vulnerability. But, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have a safe place to do that. It's, there's nothing like it. And um, we, started, we started saying, oh, this was coming up. or that We started praying for each other. And we started praying for each other's kids. And um, my daughter will say that these, these women, these five women helped raise her. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, they were like moms. That and there were times so cool. that she went to them before they went, she came to me to mm-hmm. talk about stuff when she was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And... We, you know, we've gone through um, marital troubles and divorces, and we've gone through death and loss, and we've gone through people moving away and job changes and job loss and and cancer and all kinds of things together. And they are truly sisters of my heart. Mm. They're really sisters. I don't have a biological sister, but I have five sisters of my heart. And it was that process that did it. I feel very, very blessed to have that in my mm-hmm. life. I realize how rare that is. Yeah. And um, we had somebody tell us one time that um, we were the Magnificent Five. Oh, that's a nice name. <laughs> yeah, the Magnificent Five, you know, because it was a rare thing that God did. Mm-hmm. And um, we can, we may not see each other very often because we're all in different places now um, geographically. But when we get together... I know that. I know that I can text uh, a couple of them. I just did it a couple nights ago and just texted them the emoji with praying hands and a heart and a praying hands, and they know they better pray for me. That's so special. Yeah. We, growing up, um, I mean, through high school and on into college, I, you know, I had, I had few friends, but I had just a, like a, I had lots of acquaintances, but I had few yeah. friends and I called them my heart friends. And yeah. I still have, I mean, they might change in different seasons, mm-hmm. um, but I definitely have, a, always have like a small group of women um, around the same life stages as me that I can <laughs> share my grief with about kids and <laughs> guess what Phoenix said today, Phoenix is my youngest, or, you know, how, you know, so-and-so is causing trouble, how do I how do I handle this? And you're right. The friends that will step in and be there to encourage, not only encourage, but pray. And then mm-hmm. not only pray, but also speak life into, yeah. into who God has designed you to be, what's your purpose and yes. point you in the right direction, always bringing you back to Jesus. So like those friends are just mm-hmm. invaluable. There's something to be said about having people that you can be accountable to. Oh, yeah. You know, who can say, you know, you said you were going to do this. Yes. What's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, how, what do you, you know, what are you struggling with? Or or that know you to say there's something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that accountability is so important for us to grow, but also just to, to to find our place and what God has called us to do and what he purpose he has for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like you were saying, is that it's not, it might not always be easy um, no. to let your guard down a little bit and let someone in. Because I know for me, I want to, I mean, I want to have all my stuff in order and I don't, I don't want to accept help and I don't want to accept, or I'm not always easily to accept. So you would clean your house before someone came over and cleaned it? 
Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to I ask help. Too. I think it's hard for anybody to ask for help yes. in anything. And these, you know, these friends, th- these communities that we're hoping and praying that are established yeah. in this ministry are the the friends that are vulnerable and authentic and that we can create relationships that we can lean on um, that point us to Jesus every single time. And like you mm-hmm. said, sometimes it's just it's hard to let people in. Yeah. Let people like, I mean, we talked about in a podcast earlier with Pastor Tim and Pastor Zach that iron sharpens iron. And that means that you have to get cut a little bit and yeah. ouch, refining, right? <laughs> yeah. But some of the, I mean, some of those conversations, I know that when someone has loved me enough to mm-hmm. point out an area in my life that knows is not God's best mm-hmm. for me. Those are defining moments that I've had in my life. I mean, have you ever had any of those moments where someone has called you on your, you know, stuff and it's it's pointed you in the right direction? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, there's been times when um, I know before I uh, got on staff here, I left a career in medicine. I was working in a medical office and I had a good job and I had job security. I had favor at where I worked. I had worked there a long time, had great relationships. You know, it was real secure. And, um, you know, but then I think God just wanted to mess with me a little bit (laughs) and upset my, my, my calm existence and presented me with this opportunity to, um, become on, come on staff here. And as I went through the, the process and, um, you know, there was, you know, there were a couple obstacles that came up that, you know, I was looking at some financial things and I'm like, oh my goodness, about two years bef- to backtrack two years before that, um, my husband passed away. Mm. And so I was dealing with the fact that, okay, my income just decreased anyways. And it always worked. I still don't know how on paper it shouldn't, but it did. He provided and it, you know, it worked out after, you know, Israel passed away. But, but then I'm now I'm saying, oh, now we're going to move you in this job. And, you know, you need to look at the financial Mm -hmm. implications of this. And so I was talking to someone, I'm like, okay, is this a, is this, you know, maybe this is a closed door. You know, we talk about, I'll walk through the door if it opens, Mm -hmm. you know, and all this kind of thing. And, um, and it's like, well, maybe this is a closed door, mm-hmm. you know, and because it's it was scary. And um, I had someone say to me, it's not a closed door. It's a screen door. Oh. You, you can see through it. You just need to put your hand on it and push it and open it up. It is not a closed door because you can see through it. Ooh. And and it was like, and I knew it was right. Mm-hmm. I, I knew that it was like, OK. And so it was like, yeah, OK, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm, I mean, I don't regret it. God has been so good and so faithful in so many ways. But um, left to my own devices and my own thought process at that time, I would have just probably turned and run the other way and settled. And that's the thing when we talk about being inspired. You know, God has adventure for us. And mm. our, a life with Jesus is a life full of adventure. You're right. And he wants us to show up. Yep. And so to me, it was like I could have settled and it, it would have been fine. I still would have had a good job. Yeah. I still would have been fine. But I would have missed out on the most amazing things that I've been able to be a part of for the last five years that, and the growth and the things that have happened to me that I never would have experienced. Yeah. Like this podcast. Yes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Big step for all of us. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, yes, I have been challenged. There's many times. And it is always comfortable, no. but there's many times when it's like, no, you, you can do this. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You're okay. When you're feeling like I, I've missed the mark. Yeah. To have somebody come alongside and say, I'll sit with you. Let's talk. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that you and I, we were sitting down kind of talking about what this looks like and, mm-hmm. and the, the word inspired. And I remember you, us both sitting there and mm-hmm. just looking up the Webster yeah. definition of yep. definition of inspired. Mm-hmm. So can you read it for us? It's a good one. And it was, it was like, um, I'm a word nerd. 
And Word nerd. And so when so when we were talking about this, I have an app on my phone. So it's, you know, it's the Oxford Dictionary or whatever. And I was looking at it. I was like, I'm like, oh, my gosh, listen. It says inspired means outstanding or brilliant in a way or to a degree suggestive of divine inspiration. Yes. Is that so cool? Or I what? loved it. I know. Yes. I think both of us were like, wow, that is just. Yeah. And that is the whole purpose of what we're doing here. I yes. mean. I feel like sometimes we need, I mean, like, let's, let's get on the subject of stories because mm-hmm. I feel like as long as humans have been walking the earth, we have been learning through story. Yeah. I mean, even back, like way back when, when there wasn't anything to write mm-hmm. or to document stories, we were still telling stories and yeah. it was just passed down from generation to generation. And still today, I feel like one of the most inspiring and powerful ways to learn in my life is when I hear someone's story. And, and really it's taught me so much about who I am and pushes me to really discover who I am. And so, I mean, like, I think that we've talked around three different words that we've kind of marinated on for just this, the, the, the reason for this podcast, the reason for the ministry. And that is, design, discover, and dwell. And I love those three words because I think that it, it almost, you and I were talking and it's almost like, if you think about it, it, it can be very linear, Mm -hmm. but the, the further that we were talking about it, it's almost cyclical in the spiral because when we're first learning and when we first have been inspired, a lot of it has to do with figuring out the design of of the story or, you know, whatever is inspiring us, figuring out how does this work? I mean, if you've ever, you know, seen an inspiring woman or you've, you know, seen an inspiring movie or whatever, I think that my natural tendency is to break down the des- design of it because it has an origin, it has a design, and it, and it had an inspiration at one point mm-hmm. to to be, get where it is. Um, so I think that when we look at the design, we're we're recognizing that, that God in our story and our context of our Christian faith is that we realize that God is a creator of it all. And he was the beginning of it all. And he's designing every intricate little part as we go along. And so for our stories and how that looks in our stories now is that we have a creator that's been designing our story since before the beginning of time mm-hmm. and who knows us and has like that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so in that design is where our, like, where our origin is and where inspiration comes from and that he's weaving all of our, of our stories together. And the common theme of that is really just to glorify God. And, yeah. you know, I, I think that, have you ever, if someone had walked up to you and said, like, you just really inspire me, I feel like, first of all, that would make me feel really kind of weird because I'm like... <laughs> Okay. I mean, like, or yeah, me, just me. And, but then when I think about it, you, you, you know, kind of take a step back and look in and, and you can say, I, you know, I've been inspired by several other people and women. And also, you know, I've, I've just been knit together by the creator and, you know, I have my own design, I have my own story and I'm not really walking around trying to inspire someone, but that's just what God does. Yeah. He's a designer that shows off his own work. Yeah. I like, I like the term um, that I feel like God has called us to be women with presence. Mm. Um, I read this first in a, in a book uh, a number of years ago that has had like a huge, um, a, a huge impact on me. It's called The Allure of Hope. And um, one of the things that the author talks about is talking about women with presence. And that is the woman that you spend time with and when you come away from spending time with her, she's had an impact on you. Ooh, I like that. It's true. Just being I've with her. I've had that experience before, walking you know, away from and, a... And you're just like, that changed me somehow. I just felt like I really know something about this person. I know something. You know, it, they have a presence. In which, and um, rather than just being superficial... But having, having, and that, and it's really, it's, it's God's presence in us because you get down to, he's the great designer. He's mm-hmm. the great architect. He's the one who's put it all together. Mm-hmm. He's created you and there's only one of you, Jessica. Mm-hmm. There's only one of me mm-hmm. and there will ever be, there's never going to be another one. 
And so, um, you know, to be a woman with presence is to be that person that when we spend time with someone that maybe we could be inspiring. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is something in us. And I think there's something in every woman yeah, that can be exactly that way. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, and that's what we're talking about. I think we discover. Like, yeah, I know. Well, and we, I think we so many oftentimes disqualify ourselves oh, as yeah. women. I know for me, like, it's easy, the voice in my head to be like, you're too much or like you're, you know, you're just real loud and out there or like you're just a lot or, you know, whatever. And I always mm -hmm. have to combat that with like God has designed me with a purpose. And yeah. that might mean that. I'm inspired by someone, but I'm also being able to inspire someone else just by who God has created me to be. And mm -hmm. like you said, I think that moves us into discover where discovering who we are. I mean, I know we talk a lot about identity and women's circles yeah. and confidence things and, and don't compare in and all comparison and yeah. all of that stuff. And I think that what is so important for us to uncover, which I feel like I'm constantly on along this continuum of discovering is that the more I, what I find is the more I discover about who God is, the more I discover who I am. Mm -hmm. And it's not the other way around. And because, you know, you and I just walked through this book where it talked about the Bible is really just a story about God. Mm -hmm. And so many times and how many times do we read the Bible and think it's about us? Right. I mean, you can pick out a scripture, be like that verse is for me. And I know that God like reveals himself through his through his word, but I think that there's a big thing to be, you know, kind of just to, to sit around and think about that the God of the universe, like as we discover him, we mm -hmm. start discovering who we are. Yeah. I think that, I mean, it's just a, such an important part of our journey and the way that God writes our story is that when we start to recognize him and discovering him, then we discover ourselves and then that moves us along to dwell. Yes dwelling. What does dwelling mean? I mean, <laughs> you might be listening in and thinking, what does it mean to dwell with God? I just, it's, it's kind of hard to tackle, but what would you say is, I mean, I how think, would you put it simply? <clears throat> I always love simply. your analogies. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, you know, when we talk about dwell, it's, um, I guess I kind of look at it like a really comfortable relationship. Hmm. Um, you know, we talk about dwelling, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a churchy kind of thing to say, well, well, I'm just going to dwell in the presence of God, you know, <laughs> let the angels sing. Today, I can't do that because I'm dwelling with God. <laughs> right. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> but, but it, there's, I mean, there's truth in that. Right. But let's be, let's be real. The way most women's lives are, we don't have like an hour to sit down and dwell with You're the Lord. Right. I mean, we just don't because of the demands on our lives and everything else. So what does that look like all day long mm, yeah. to always be conscious of that and, and, and grow in that consciousness? Because I, I'm not always very good at that because I can get so in my head or I can get so in my circumstances, yes. you know, and, um, and instead of then being conscious that, you know, God really isn't interested in every part of my life, yeah. every part he's interested in mm -hmm. and not just my devotional time in the morning or just when I'm at church on Sunday or when I'm yeah. listening to something, um, Come on with you know, That's he, right. you know, he wants that. And, and when we do dwell with him, he transforms us and changes us. Mm, yes. And, and that's, I think where we get into the cycle is that in doing that, then, you know, we, we then find more of what we're designed to do and mm -hmm. we discover more about him. And it's just this constant thing because we are on a path. Yes, we are on a path. You know, I I just love the scripture in Hebrews 12, one and two, where it talks about that, you know, about the great cloud of witnesses that we're surrounded by and that we are to run the race that's marked out for us. You know, it's a race. It's it's we're going somewhere. Yeah, We have a direction. We have a direction. And all of three of these things are just so much a part of it. Yes. And I think that's what's so exciting about Inspired is that. This is, you know, all of these pieces will come together and women, you know, f women will be able to find all those things and find all those pieces and get on that, that path and grow. And their lives are going to be transformed and changed, yes. which is going to affect their families and everybody else yes. that they're around, their job, whatever, go to the grocery store. Has an impact <laughs> further than we know. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah. I think that's such a good way to put dwell is a close relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, we said earlier, like I tend to think of it as a linear thing. And as Mm -hmm. we were talking, you're right. It is such a, it's a, it's intertwined and interconnected Mm -hmm. because I know that at some, sometimes in my life, I'm still learning about who he is. I I mean, I'll always be on a Mm -hmm. journey of learning who God is and in turn learning who I am. I mean, yes, even just to think the amount of growth that I've experienced in one year, I really feel like during the pandemic, it was like there was different aspects of, of my everyday routine that just totally changed. Yes. (laughs) Which showed me in kind of a bad way that like my identity was anchored in some of the things that I did. Mm-hmm. And what God retrained me to think, and as I as I dwelled with Him, as I learned who He was, as I discovered who He was in His Word, and through praying and just seeking wise advice, was I discovered more of who He was, and He was defining me, not by what I do, but who I'm becoming. And so I feel yeah. like, for me, it was so important to learn that I'm not defined by what I do, but who I am. Yeah. And God had to define that for me. And it only happened when I discovered some of the attributes of, of who he is. Yeah. I mean, because like when I can focus on, you know, we, we can easily say like God is holy. And then there's that verse that says, be holy because I am holy. It's, you know, I think for the longest time and still, I'm still unpacking. What is it like? What does God's holiness mean? And what does that mean for me? And what does it mean in my life? Because he's calling me to be holy, but I don't really know how to do that. And I don't really know what that means. Mm-hmm. And what God, I feel like what I sense God telling me is just keep dwelling, just keep pressing in, keep mm-hmm. discovering, keep looking to my design because my design is perfect. The way that I create is perfect. I'm in everything. I'm, I'm with everything. I breathe life into things. I bring dead things to life. And if I, If I listen to him just telling me, you know, press in. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way that I do that in community too. Because I can't, most times I can't just do it by myself. And I think that's why this is, this, you know, is so important that we're, we're getting serious about cultivating and creating Mm -hmm. a community where that can happen. Absolutely. And yeah. this is just a little part of that. Maybe just the podcast, maybe just a conversation might whet your appetite to, you know, just listen in a little bit more, lean a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're just one of those people that likes to kind of stay on the sidelines until you really know what's happening. Yeah. Cause I'm kind of like that. I'm a little skeptical. I like to kind of figure out what's happening before I jump in with both feet Mm -hmm. and so maybe that maybe this podcast can be that for you maybe you're you know driving to work maybe you're on lunch break maybe you've been invited by another friend um, to ask to listen to this and maybe that's just your first step yeah maybe it's just your first step in the process of realizing that there's a design and that I can discover and that I can dwell yes absolutely I, I think too that um you know, I was thinking as you were talking about the, the, the time of the pandemic when most of us were just staying at home, working at home, you know, for those of us that go to church, it was probably online, you know, we, we were just very, very limited and everything. And, and I couldn't, it was, it was a time for, for myself because I live alone that that isolation was just almost deadly in many ways but it it create it created in me kind of like what you were talking about of just saying i need to face myself yes and it gave that's scary it gave me a time in a way when i just felt like i need just i need to look at myself there are some things that god is putting his finger on you know and um and and being able to do that but I think that thankfully we are out of that season Mm -hmm. and I think that many people went through things like that Mm -hmm. and it's time I feel like God's saying it's time to gather back together Mm -hmm. and we're going to start putting some of these things together some of these stories together and we're going to start talking with one another and connecting and we're going to start um, you know helping each other discover Mm -hmm. you know I think the thing I want I'm so looking forward to is that I know that as we share stories and other women with us share stories that I know that 
anyone who's listening, they're going to hear themselves. Yes. And those stories. Yes. I mean, because, you know, as we, we kind of wrap up, we, I mean, I just want to say that we all come from different walks of life with mm-hmm. so many different experiences, yeah. um, so many different joys in life, mm-hmm. so many different sad, dark days in life. Yeah. And so many just experiences that vary from person to person, even, you know, clashing with different personalities and different, um, the way that we were raised as children. I think all of it, like God, like we talked at the beginning, God does not waste any of it. And I think Mm -hmm. he has something really, really remarkable and really special for not only this community woman at our church for this inspired ministry, but also, um, for those listening in from far away as well. I mean, just because you're not in Columbus, Ohio, doesn't mean that you're excluded from this conversation right. and can't, you know, join in and learn something. And so I just, you know, I want you to you know, invite those women around you. Oh, yeah. In invite. Because, <laughs> you know, if, if, it, if, it can, if it can happen this way, my desire would be that this conversation might be just a launching point and a starting point for other conversations in those smaller circles Yes, that we can encourage each other with and that we can, we can use to connect with one another and we can use to dive into a little bit deeper mm-hmm. topics. Maybe we can tee you off and get you started and maybe a direction, that, like maybe you invite someone to listen to just this first one and you get together with a group of girls or women and just talk about like, like, what is it? Like, I've been inspired in my life this way. How have you been inspired? Or who's mm-hmm. a person that inspires you? Yeah. Or what inspires you? Um, and then just to be able to talk about that, just mm-hmm. openly and freely, without shame and without, you know, condemnation. And I think that that's where a lot of those beginning foundations of, of friendships start, is yeah. maybe just to buy a conversation like we're doing today. That is a wonderful thought, isn't it? Yes. I love it. Yeah. So <laughs> you are going to want to tune in next week. We have some really great like plans. I mean, I'm so excited about, I mean, this table mm-hmm. will not only be Janice and I. Yeah. We are going to share this table with a number of different women from our church, maybe some from not from our church, but I know this, we all have something to learn from every story that we hear around this table. It's going to be inspired. Yes, very, yes, you're so right. (laughs) Next week, we are going to have Morgan to come and join us. And she's gonna, we're gonna kind of break down it. I I would love for you to tune in because we've got, we kind of touched on the subjects today of design and discover and dwell. But what we're gonna be doing for the next podcast and in this season is we're gonna take each one of those topics and we're going to be diving into them a little bit deeper. So Morgan will be here next week, and she's going to be talking about design and how God the Creator has designed all of her steps. And she's going to talk about where she was, you know, maybe 10 years ago and where she is now and how God got her there and the revelations that God revealed to her to get her to where she is now. So you're going to want to tune in next week. Thanks so much for listening. Our hope is that everyone who hears these episodes, near or far, would know that the invitation at our table is always open. You might not be sitting at this table, but our desire is that you would join in on these conversations. So if you were inspired by today's talks, send us an email at inspired at the X dot church. We'd love to hear your thoughts, stories, and questions. And as always, don't forget to rate and review wherever you listen to podcasts.